Bonjour, bonjour, the imperfect peace man. Part five with quirky, irregular IR verbs. Quick recap, the imperfect tense is one of the past tenses. To form it, we use the new stem of the present indicative, the normal present tense. Then we add the endings AIS, AIS, AIT, IONS, IEZ, AIENT. It is used when there are parallel actions running alongside each other in the past. It shows the background information. That's why we have these theatre curtains. It's scene setting. It's also the storytelling tense. Once upon a time. It's the wuzzing and the whirring, the spinning top tense. I was sleeping. You were sleeping. Wuzzing and whirring. When I were a lad, that's the baby, I used to. I would do this. That's when you use the imperfect. Also for the simple past, when you are talking about habitual or repetitive or frequent actions. I ate, if you meant I used to eat on a regular basis, there in French you would use the imperfect. And special little use comes after if, si plus l'imparfait. With the imperfect, there is no clear beginning or end to the action. It's not important. It's like a meandering path. If the imperfect were a person, they would be like this Zen woman. It doesn't matter when it started. It doesn't matter when it finished. She loves to tell a story about what she used to do when she was young and goes into great detail about the background information. The sun was shining, the birds were tweeting, da 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 da. Okay, let's get going. We are looking at the quirky, irregular IR verbs. We're going to use partir as our example, to leave, to go away. Let's first of all look at it in the present indicative, the normal present tense. Je pars, with an S. Tu pars, with an S. Il, elle, on part, with a T. Nous partons, vous partez, il, elle, part. Now, the endings for this group that we're going to look at first are S, S, T, O, N, S, E, Z, E, N, T in the present tense. We know we need the new stem to form the imperfect. So we take partons, we get rid of the O, N, S, we're left with the stem and we add on the ending AIS for je. Je partais. Let's continue. Tu partais with the AIS. Il, elle, on partait. AIT. Nous partions. IONS. Vous partiez. IEZ. The last one sounds like the first three, even though it's got ENT at the end. It is silent. Il, elle, partait. So, I was leaving, she was leaving, she used to leave. What if we left? How about if we left? I never left on time when I was working at this place. And just for the sake of revision, let's remind ourselves of what partir is like in the present perfect. First of all, partir is a VIP verb. There's only about 15 of these and this is one of them. Very important indeed. VIP because they're used a lot. And also mainly because they use être as their auxiliary verb in the present perfect. Je suis parti. And because it's with être, now your past participle has to agree with the subject. So if you're a woman, you would add an extra E. Not that you can hear it. Tu es parti. Il, elle, on est parti. Nous sommes parti. Has the S on because nous is plural. I hear it though. Vous êtes parti. Il, elle, sont parti. Let's look at these verbs. What do they mean then? Partir. To leave, to go away. We are leaving through that door. Repartir. Of course, to leave, to go away again. Sortir. It means several things, sortir. It means to come out. Are you coming out with this? To go out. Are you going out? To get out. If you want to get something out of your handbag, for example, sortir to date, to go out with somebody. Sortir is also a VIP verb. 
Je suis sorti. Je suis sorti avec Julien. I went out with Julien. However, if you are talking about getting something out, as soon as you have a something, it's not a VIP verb anymore. It now goes with avoir. If you take something out, your auxiliary verb is avoir. J'ai sorti mon portable de mon sac à main. But if you're saying, I just went out, je suis sorti. Courir. To run. Think of a courier. Mentir à. To lie. On the big nose, she's got mint coming out of it. Mentir à. Sentir. Think sentiments. To feel, but also, one of the other senses, to smell. À vous. How do you say to leave, to go away? Partir. To leave, to go away again. Repartir. To come out, to go out, to get out something, to date. Sortir. To run. Courir. To lie. Mentir à. To feel, to smell. Think sentiment. Sentir. They're all IL verbs. Sentir. We were leaving for France. Nous partions pour la France. On partait pour la France. Using vous. I told her you were leaving for France tomorrow. Je lui ai dit que vous partiez pour la France demain. So, I told is j'ai dit. But now you are putting in your indirect object pronoun to her, which is lui. That splits up the je and the et. Je lui ai dit que vous partiez pour la France demain. He was leaving again the next day. Il repartait le lendemain. So, tomorrow is demain, the next day, le lendemain. Monique was going out with Julien at the time. Monique sortait avec Julien à l'époque. I used to run between 7 and 10 kilometers a day. Je courais entre 7 et 10 km par jour. So because the word 10, 10, is followed by a noun that starts with a consonant, you will often hear 10 km. If it started with a vowel, you could merge the 10 to the vowel, like 10 oranges, 10 orange. But you will often hear when it's not a vowel, 10, 10 km. The number on its own, you're just counting, is 10. But here it's acting like an adjective. They were running the risk of going bankrupt. To go bankrupt, we use faire in French. Faire faillite. Can't hear any else. Faire faillite. Il, elle, courait le risque de faire faillite. I used to lie all the time to my parents because they were so strict. The word for strict, strict does exist, but you will hear a lot more sévère for strict, sévère to be severe. Je mentais tout le temps à mes parents parce qu'ils ou parce qu'elles étaient si tellement sévères. Tout le temps. When it's spoken quickly, it sounds more like tout le temps, tout le temps. Ça sentait toujours la cigarette. Oh, ça sentait encore la cigarette. Have a guess at what this means. Okay. 
it still smelled of cigarettes. So toujours is always, but it also can mean still, and so can encore. In French, if you want to say it smelled of something, you have to say it was smelling the something. Sa santé, then the, whatever, la cigarette. When something is stuffy, when the windows haven't been opened, the French call it the, the closed in. So if you want to say, oh, it smelt stuffy, they would say, it smelt the closed in. Sa santé le renfermé. In the present tense, you would say, ça sent, ça sent la cigarette. It smells of cigarettes. Ça sent le renfermé. It smells stuffy. Ça sent mauvais. Ça sent bon. <laughs> D'accord, more irregular IR verbs in this group. Dormir. To sleep. S'endormir. To fall asleep. Se rendormir. To fall back asleep. To go back to sleep. Servir à. To serve, of course, but also this verb is used an awful lot in French to say to be used for the purpose of it. It serves as se servir de. To help oneself to, and again, to use. A vous, to sleep. Dormir. To fall asleep. You can see it's pronominal, it's got the big arrow there. S'endormir. To fall back asleep, to go back to sleep. Se rendormir. To serve or be used for. Servir à. To help oneself to. To use. With the arrow. Se servir de. Here it's followed by de. To make use of. Think of it that way. Se servir de. Using to. Were you sleeping? Tu dormais? I used to sleep in this bedroom. Je dormais dans cette chambre. Officially, the word for a bedroom is une chambre à coucher. But of course, everybody just says chambre. She was falling asleep when he woke her up. Elle s'endormait. Quand il l'a réveillé. Okay, so to wake somebody up. Normally, se réveiller, if you're waking yourself up, is a pronominal verb. Pronominal verbs have être as their auxiliary verb. But this is not pronominal because it is somebody waking somebody else up. When it's not pronominal and it's not a VIP verb, the auxiliary verb is avoir. So, il a réveillé, he awoke her up. Il l'a, the L apostrophe stands for la there, L-A. Two vowels, we need an apostrophe. Because she's feminine, as soon as your direct pronoun goes before the past participle, oh, guess what? Now the past participle has to agree with the direct object. <laughs> anyway, can't hear the difference. Just in case you were wondering why there was an extra E. I would never fall back to sleep after that nightmare. The word for nightmare is un cauchemar. Or you could just say a bad dream. Un mauvais rêve. Je ne me rendormais jamais après ce cauchemar, après ce mauvais rêve. I used to serve ice creams at the beach. Je servais des glaces à la plage. How about you serve me a beer using two?
Et si tu me servais une bière? He was using me. Il se servait de moi. She used to use the money to buy us clothes. Elle se servait de l'argent pour nous acheter des vêtements. Our second group of quirky, irregular IR verbs are the ones that are really confused because they don't want to be IR verbs. We want to be ER verbs, they say. An example of this is ouvrir, to open. Let's check it out in the present indicative first of all. So I open, I am opening, I do open. J'ouvre. Tu ouvres. Il, elle, on ouvre. Nous ouvrons. Vous ouvrez. Il, elle, ouvre. Silent ENT. So these have the same endings as for regular ER verbs. E, ESE, ONS, EZ, ENT. Now for the imperfect tense, we need the new stem. The stem just means you knock off the ONS. So I was opening, I used to open. What if we opened? J'ouvrais. Tu ouvrais. Il, elle, on ouvrait. Nous ouvrions. Vous ouvriez. Il, elle, ouvrait. And just for revision, let's look at the present perfect. It's a normal verb. It takes avoir as the auxiliary. Although it does have an irregular past participle. Do you remember it from when we did the present perfect? It's ouvert, isn't it? J'ai ouvert. Tu as ouvert. Il, elle, on a ouvert. Nous avons ouvert. Vous avez ouvert. Ils, elles ont ouvert. Ouvert also means open as in when the shop is open. Quite often adjectives are the same as the past participle in English and in French. Let's look at this group of verbs then, the IR that want to be ER verbs. Ouvrir means to open. Couvrir, which is just ouvrir with a C in the beginning. <laughs> to cover. Recouvrir. To cover again. To cover completely or to cover up. Découvrir. Yes, to discover, to find out, to uncover or to remove a layer, like a layer of clothing. To open. Ouvrir. To cover. Couvrir. To cover again, to cover completely, to cover up. Recouvrir. To discover, find out, uncover, remove a layer like a layer of clothing. Découvrir. What if I opened another bottle of champagne? Et si j'ouvrais une autre bouteille de champagne? They were covering the demonstrations. The word demonstration does exist, as in to say, to show something, a demonstration. But if you're talking about a demonstration where people are rallying against something, the French use the word manifestation, also feminine. All I-O-N words are feminine. It's often shortened to une manif. You might hear it on the news. Il ou elle couvrait les manifestations. Using to. What if you covered the stain up with a poster? Poster. Une affiche. Affiche. It's even used as a verb. Afficher. As in like billboards to, to advertise something like a play or, or anything. Et si tu recouvrais la tache avec une affiche. So a stain is une tache. Think of your face being stained with a tache. Une tache. There's another tache, but this one has a circumflex, the little hat accent over the A, which shows there used to be an S there. That one means a task. 
And what if he discovered that you weren't there addressing too? Et s'il découvrait que tu n'y étais pas? Okay, you were there is I. You could have said, and in spoken French people do say this, et s'il découvrait que tu étais pas là? I replaces la, doesn't it? Think of there is, there are, il y a. D'accord, more IR verbs that want to be ER verbs. Offrir à. To offer. Now, offrir is often used to say to buy for someone. They might say, je peux vous offrir un verre? Can I buy you a drink? Or, c'est moi qui offre, I'm buying. Cueillir, cueillir. Means to pick, as in to pick flowers or pick fruit. Recueillir. To gather, to collect. Accueillir. Means to welcome, to accommodate, take in, to host. A vous, to offer, to buy for. Offrir à. To pick, as in to pick flowers or fruit. Cueillir. To gather, collect. Recueillir. To welcome, accommodate, take in, to host. Accueillir. He always used to buy me earrings for Christmas. Earrings are boucle, which means like a lock, a circular thing. Boucle d'oreille, feminine plural. Il m'offrait toujours des boucles d'oreilles pour Noël. Boucle, we've got Goldilocks. Boucle d'or. Boucle can be used in an impolite way to say, ferme-la, boucle-la. <laughs> it's not very nice. I used to pick blackberries every September. I miss it. Blackberry mûr, une mûre. Je cueillais des mûres tous les septembre, au chaque septembre. Ça me manque. So when we use the verb manquer to mean to miss something, in French you have to phrase it the opposite way. You have to say the thing that you're missing first. So it is missing to me. Ça me manque. You want to say I miss you. In French you have to say you are missing to me. Tu me manques. I miss Julien. You have to say Julien is missing to me. Julien me manque. English TV, I miss it. English TV is missing to me. La télévision anglaise me manque. They were collecting data from June 1996. Data, données, the givens, les données. Il ou elle recueillait des données de juin 1996. They used to host children. They were foster parents. You could say for foster parents, parents d'accueil or famille d'accueil. Il ou elles accueillaient des enfants. Il ou elles étaient des parents ou une famille d'accueil. Finally, we have a quirky IR verb all by itself in a group of its own. Mourir, to die. Let's conjugate it in the present indicative. 
je meurs. It goes to EU. Je meurs. There aren't many EU. We've got je veux, je peux. And then we've got je meurs. Tu meurs. Il, elle, on meurt. Back to the infinitive spelling because we know that nous and vous are very square. Nous mourons. Vous mourrez. Il, elle, meurt. We need the nous stem for the imperfect. Je mourrai. Tu mourrai. Il, elle, on mourrai. Nous mourions. Vous mourriez. Il, elle, mourrai. And it's another VIP verb. So we've got to use être. Je suis mort. Now for feminine, you do hear a difference. Je suis morte. Tu es mort ou morte. Il, elle, on est mort ou morte. Nous sommes morts ou mortes. Vous êtes morts ou mortes. Ils ou elles sont morts ou mortes. Mourir, what does it mean? <laughs> Our little miscellaneous one. To die. How do you say to die in French? Mourir. I was dying of hunger. Je mourrais de faim. To die for, as in you really, really want something very, very much. In French, the expression is mourir d'envie de. You've got two does. Mourir d'envie de. Then whatever it is you're dying for. He was dying to meet you using two. Il mourrait d'envie de te rencontrer. We were dying to see you using vous. Nous mourions d'envie de vous voir. If you're going to use on, on mourrait d'envie de vous voir. Useful phrase there. Et voilà les amis. Merci beaucoup, vous avez fini, à la prochaine fois